right, well, I'm doing this a little backward. I've already got started on this, but I thought I might make a little video. This is a 2011 Honda Fit Sport, and I'm putting on a base plate on it to pull behind the motorhome. This is a Demco, and its number is... That light is awful bright. Kick it thing. There we go. It's a 951... 951... Looks like it's an 8236. I think that's what it is. Basically, anyway, it fits the, it's made by Demco. It fits the Honda. Honda Fit, and... I had, had a couple little issues so far. One thing is a little bit of alignment issue. You can see here, I had to slot that one hole here just a little bit to get the top bolt in. And then on this side, I had to slot two to get to get it to work. I had to slot the, the that bolt to get it to line up. And I had to slot the top one a little bit also. Just, just a little bit. Now these lined up fine. And these three lined up. So that's one little issue I run into. Something else, uh, getting the, getting this crazy plastic bumper off without breaking it, that was interesting too. Now where'd my little tool go? Oh, there it is. This little device here sure did help. Uh, so it's, it's a, one of those little plastic tools to help pop off all these plastic contraptions. You know, everything's held together with plastic fittings. Um, but what's tricky, when you first get into it, is this piece right here, just under the light. Because now that it's off, you can kind of see better how, how it works, how it's made. So you got these little clips right there. So as you tug on it, another thing to watch out for, it's hard. You, it's, the instructions aren't really clear. It talks about a screw that you got to get removed. In the picture, you really can't hardly tell where it's at. But there's a screw that goes it's right up in here, a Phillips screw. Get my fat finger out of the way. I drive this thing. There's a Phillips screw right up in here. You got to get out. And there's a couple of plastic, plastic clips all over the plastic to, on the bottom and across the top. But once you get that off, you know, get, getting the fender out from here, it's a really a tight fit. You feel like you're going to break it. And on a cold day, you probably could. But uh, but if you can get a little plastic tool in there and then push down on that, that'll get help it come out. In the same way, like with this. I get a better shot of it. I took this plastic tool while the fender was on there and got in here and just raised raised up on it slightly. And I'd raise up and then pull and pop each, each one out as it came around. And you can see on the fender how it's made. So you've got these little, these little slots that it snaps into. Uh, just, just like that up in here. So that's a just a little little tricky part. But one of these tools, I sure would get one of these. That's, that's really handy to, to, to pop those pieces off with. So now, of course, now i got to take the bolts back out and, and put the actual bumper back on. And here's here's the bumper. So I'll get that put back on. Then I'll start putting the, all the plastic back on it again. And then i got to think about my supplemental braking, how I'm going to put that on. I haven't decided what I'm going to go with yet. I'm think, leaning toward the ready brake. So I got to see about you know where to mount my cable and how to run it through the most smooth way without kinking any cables or wires. But uh, I shall continue on and we'll before I start putting this back together. I was going to show you have to cut some plastic off this piece. Here's here's the old piece. What what's left of it? It sat up here like this. So you cut that off and I sort of unnotched it. You can see under here. Come on, look. You see how I notched the plastic where that little, where the metal bracket would fit in there, and I notched it some on this side too, just a little bit. You see the back side of it? How it's notched. Then the same way on the other side. There's another little small piece of plastic to cut out. It's, it's not very big, it's just this little piece right here. Cut it out, but, but the same way I, I put me a little, little notch in it. It kind of helps as you um, set, set this up here, it'll kind of sit in there and hold it for you steady as you get a couple of bolts in it. So that's the way I, I did that. Yeah. Base plate off. I keep finding things to talk about. Uh, this here, you want to, you have to drill this out. I guess they do this so it's for reinforcement. Because from the factory, 
uh, you just got little spot welds, little spot welds here. But you already have two holes, but they're too small, so you drill them out to five sixteenths. As long as you get your five sixteenths drill bit, you drill them out and use the bolts they provide. Stick that in there. But be sure to, before you get started on this project to buy you some Loctite. So I got me some Loctite. So put those, they say you want to Loctite all your threads. Because even these were pretty good to get out because the factory Loctite's those. So I guess that's an important thing. You don't want your base plate coming loose. But in the kit, it does not provide any Loctite. Luckily, I had some sitting around. So um, that's something to remember before you get started. It gets some Loctite at the, your local parts store and there's the other two two bolts on, on this side and we'll start to we'll get this bumper the base plate and the bumper put on and see what that looks like well we got a lot of bugs I need to fix that and there's this little tab these things you got to take a hammer and knock them down flat I guess that must be used on the assembly line to help you know when you, to put it together quick you, you fit that up there and it fits in a hole and holds it as they get the bolts put in just take you a good ball ping hammer and knock those down and here I get that done okay see that was easy just a couple of hits knock that little air down so now we're ready to put that on there with the base plate and, and tighten things up and here's another tip when you got to dr drill these holes out right here for the base base plate uh, that was extra strengthening bolts you have to be careful because you got to get at an angle to lift this tank up out of the way so you can get it in there. And there's a bolt way up in there, 10, 10 millimeter. Yeah, you can see them shining back in there. That's the one you gotta loosen it up. That way you can raise this up good and high. Uh, take your quarter inch uh, ratchet. And then you've got uh, a bolt here to take out up top. There's one down here at the bottom to take out. That'll loosen up that, that uh, washer fluid tank. And help you move it out of the way so you can get your drill in there that way you don't accidentally mess, put a hole in your tank that would make for a bad day probably expensive too so you see the base plate is on and now i've got the the, the original bumper bolted back on something else i did because i want to really want to get those tight you can see what i did I, I took my ratchet put it over a pipe so i could really lay down the torque get it good and tight and so now I got to uh, drill some holes because there's a piece out there. You see that's going to be drilled up, up into, the, into the bumper. So that's the next step. Actually, you know, I will probably, now that I see this, I'll probably have to loosen these bolts up a little bit before I do that and then bring them back up. Because I got a little bit of a gap. It might pull too, I'm not, not sure. We'll, we'll see what happens. Hey, I'm making a small modification. I've drilled my hole from the bottom of the base plate up through the through the bumper right here. But even after that, and loosening my bolts, I still got a gap, and I don't want to be forcing and bending, getting anything out of alignment. So what I'm going to do is add add me a washer between here. That'll take up that that space. And I'll be able to get it nice and tight. Yeah, it's nice and snug. Because both sides are doing the exact same thing. Had a slight gap. It's not meeting the bumper. So I got me another washer. Like that there. And another little tip. Of course, as you're drilling, you know, it works out better. It works for me anyway. Is to take my drill from underneath and, and push, push up. I'm trying to get a better picture of this. Yeah. You take your drill, pull that, and then just push up through it. Instead, you know, stand up like this, and you pull it right up to yourself, and you can get a you can get a real good grip on it, pull straight up. Instead of trying to lay on the ground and push up, because you push up, you get all those shavings down on your eyes and hair, and that's no fun. But all right, so I'm gonna get those next. These bolts going here up through. And on the, the back side of the, the bumper, you can, see, you can see the hole there. And I'll get my lock, lock tight, lock nuts on there. And All right, get that buttoned up. Coming down, down the home stretch here. And so I put it back on here loosely. I haven't got nothing fastened yet. I just got it back up on, on here. The 
front bumper, big plastic nose. And I wanted to do this first. Well, first of all, I'll pop the grill out of it. I pop this out. Of the, it pops out of the back side. So I took it off first because I wanted to know exactly how these are going to be positioned. Because the instructions really aren't that clear about where you got to cut this at. So, so I think I'm gonna have to, you know, cut here, cut there. Just I just don't want to cut any any more than I absolutely have to. So that's why I took this out, put the bump, put the bumper back on, so I can get a better idea of where everything's going to be positioned, and I'll know what to cut and how much. But I really like the look of it. I like that it don't stick out very much. It's not going to be a shin catcher. And uh, looks good. Oh, and I was going to show when I was talking earlier about when you go to get this thing apart, it's kind of tricky, you know, getting it off. You feel like you, you think it's going to start breaking all the plastic. And there's a um, Phillips screw kind of hidden up in here. You want to be sure to get that one loose. And all kinds of plastic snaps all over the place on the bottom, a whole bunch of them. And I got this thing up on jack stands too to get me a little more clearance. It wheels off the ground even. And then you can see down in here where I used this plastic tool to help unclip these pieces here under the light. That really made a difference in, in getting, this, getting it to come off. I just started here, worked around, start, just popped each one individually until, until it came off. So that should help out a little bit. So, all in all, it looks, it looks very nice. All right, here's how I trimmed it. So I think it's going to be about right. Cut this little off, cut that piece off here. And uh, did the same thing over here. Took my Dremel tool and cleaned up the plastic a little bit. And it should fit on here just, just right, nice and snug. Of course, I gotta take the fender all back off. So it's another day, and we're still working on this project of the tow bar and the auxiliary brake and the lights and all that stuff that I got going on. Got the tow bar. I took it all apart. Took the poles out of it. Shined everything. Cleaned it up. It's been sitting. This I've got it used. It's been sitting around for years, and it all cleaned up real well. Everything works good and smooth. So got that part all done. So. That is ready, and I've, I'm waiting for my the uh, auxiliary brake to show up to hopefully tomorrow, and I'll start putting installing it. I've done got some stuff apart here, so I can get get to it because I've got to get back there and into the brake booster and cut a hose and tap into the vacuum line, run wires, and all that project. Next thing back here in the back, you see I've got everything. Well, you'll soon see how I've dissected this poor little car. Um, yeah, my, my wife wasn't none too pleased. What have you done to the car? But um, the reason I'm doing this is I've got the, you know, because the RV's going to be pulling this when it hit the brake lights, turn the signals, run lights, everything on the RV, everything has to activate on the back of the car. And I've got a little wiring kit coming in that will plug into these connectors right here and right into these lights. But according to what videos I've seen online, what I want you to do is make your connections, drop the drop the wires down under the car, and then strap them to the frame all the way back up front. And I don't want all those wires exposed and doing all that nonsense. So that's why I took all this all this plastic off. What is amazing, you can take this whole car apart just about without no tools. All I got was one of those little plastic uh, trim tools and popped all the stuff off with that. The only time I needed a wrench was to take the seat belt loose. But uh, popping all this plastic off gives me excess. I can easily, I got me, you see up here is 100 foot of uh, half inch Romex. So I'm gonna run my auxiliary brake wires or my braking light wires, you know, through that so everything will be protected. I'm gonna run it all and just follow these other wires down around and zip tie everything in place and put all the plastic back together. And, um, I found out, I mean, it's, it comes, all this plastic comes off pretty easy once you just pull off your trim. So I'm just start, start popping off plastic, plastic everywhere. So I could run the wires right along here, up along the front. Then I'll um, run it right along the main harness up in here. Then I can go through the, go through the firewall up front where I'll be, be making my connection. Uh, to the RV. 
And there's something of a mystery. I haven't figured this part out yet. This is I got to research. I come across this blue wire. It comes off the A pillar. It was just down here dangling. And I haven't tracked down where the heck that goes yet, but that's on my agenda to, to see what that mystery is. So hopefully I'll get some parts in tomorrow and I'll continue on this a little adventure and uh, getting everything hooked up and put this poor car back together. See, there's more plastic, plastic everywhere. And we'll then we'll try it all out and see how well it works. Right, it's like Christmas. Got all my little goodies here today. Came in, I got all the stuff off Amazon. We got here, of course, uh, let me see what all we got. Well, here's the main thing. That is our stay and play, the supplemental braking system. Got this vacuum cylinder. That's what we'll pull down on the brake pedal. And of course, truckload of wires and connectors and some reading to do and figure all this out. And then I got my other parts here. That this is, of course, if it's, this is for a Honda Fit 2011 Hopkins. 56302. This goes to the tail lights. This will go right into the tail lights. So it'll op operate the turn of signal, brake lights, running lights. So whatever the RV does, the back of the car will do also. I got this little device here. This is also from uh, uh, Hopkins. It's a uh, 39332. This is what keeps the battery charged up as I'm going down the road. So the the towed or the car will stay. Uh, charged, not cannot get run down. Of course, I got this cord. This will run from the RV to the car, and I got this, the 48425, which I'm gonna mount this to the car, so we have a quick connection. It come with a four-way. This came with a four-way flat, but I'm gonna cut this off and wire it into this via a better connector. And so I'm going to get started. Well. My curiosity got to me. I had to take this apart. I could do everything else to see how this thing works. So, because they call this a vacuum-assisted brake, supplemental brake system or something like that, I was under the assumption that this was a vacuum cylinder. It's not it's actually pressure. It takes air pressure to activate this cylinder, this cable. It's hard to do this one-handed. That's how it works. It actually takes air pressure. Uh, I took this apart because you can see you got your little pump here. You got your relay that activates the pump, little cylinder. Because this is the the large line, the vacuum line, which which goes to the booster to tease into the booster, the brake booster on the car. And then you got this small line coming out, and I guess this is some sort of switch. It's got a relay rod on it, so it must control the air pressure. So it sucks in, pressurizes, then sends air pressure. To, to this cylinder that will activate the brake pedal. So, nice compact little design. Looks like it's all put together very well. So I'll button it back up and satisfy my curiosity for a few minutes anyway. Well, now I'm up here to the front. I'm starting to install the, the SMI, what's it called? Stay and Play Duo. What the Stay and Play Duo. Yeah, that's what it is anyway. And there is a complete video on e-trailer showing a 2011 Honda Fit just like this the complete install and I watched that one thing I didn't like the way they did is they had this little plastic that's your plastic battery box well they just zip tied this control unit it's quite heavy I mean you got a compressor in here and a lot of steel I just didn't like the idea of all that weight just hanging off by zip ties on the side of the battery battery case I didn't think that's a good long-term solution so I'm looking at my situation to see what I can make better it is kind of it's kind of snug in here ain't a whole lot of room um, but one thing I noticed I got in here because you, you had two wires these were both positioned they were snapped you can see the little snaps here they were both snapped in about you know like like this so those had to get out of the way so I've got those unplugged. That's that's fine. I can reroute those easy. And then I got some of this this stuff here. This is like a it's like a foam and peeling stick. I don't even know where, where I got it from, but I got it somewhere. And so I uh, took that took a hair dryer, heated heated up the the glue on the back side, the sticky stuff, so it stick real good. So that way the weight of the control unit will sit right on this little pad here, and it won't be you know, vibrating around, but underneath that it'll be supported by the main frame of the car. 
and then the, my attachment point is I'm going to use this, this bracket. Let's drop it back in there, see what it looks like. Oh, stick this back in here. Well, another thing I had to change is you see the battery bracket. You see how I, I, how I bent it? More straight, it was the one next to it just com comes out like an almost 90 degree. So bend that so it's not digging into the back, back of the box. You to protect, protect that. And so then I'm going to take this bracket, my big L bracket. I'll mount it to the frame. You've got a nice lip here. I can drill a hole and get me some good strong bolts in. And then put a couple of bolts in the back side of, the side, side of this. And that'll give it, a, I think, a really good secure mounting location. It won't be wiggling around off the battery, plastic battery case. So that's what I'm going to start doing right now. It turned out pretty nice. Battery's in place. This is over to the side. It's separate. It's good and strong. And I'll show you what it looks like with the battery out. Okay, here's the battery tray. It's separate. It's not, not attached to it. Pull it out. Okay, and you can see what I did. There's my L bracket. I screwed it down there. Put a couple screws in the, in the side of it. Got the, the little rubber pad on the bottom to give it some nice support. It's, it has a little bit of wiggle room, but uh, should keep the vibrations down. So I just like that a little bit better than zapping it to the side of the box. There's, there's my wire I had to reroute, but that, that turned out just fine. So I'll okay, now I'm jump back here to the back. What I'm doing now, I can do this one handed or not. Um, you can see this is a, what that's the word my book got here. It's a Hopkins 56302 for this Honda Fit. So this allows me to, for the tail lights and running lights, brake lights to work from the motorhome. So when I hit the brakes on the motorhome, it'll operate these lights. And real nice outfit. It's got diodes in here, so don't back feed into the car's electrical system. And it's just, just quite simple. So here's the original bulb. That's the factory wiring right here. So you just unplug that. And then you, uh, you plug the Hop Hopkins. I think it's the name of that. Yeah, Hopkins. It's the name of the company. You plug it in. And then you take your bulb, plug it right back into this this connection. That's all you do, and then you put it all back together. And stick it back in the socket. Now, what I've did, it didn't come with uh, any Romex, so but I bought a hundred foot of it from Amazon. And you see how I've run it from the uh, from the left side over to the right side, taped it up under here, and. In order to get this, I've done made this connection on this side. In order to get to here, you need to pull your rubber off. If you got a Honda Fit like this, and, and pull back, and you'll see right in there that little connection there. There's one snap. There's another snap up here. Pop those loose with one of these tools, and it makes it real easy. You can pull this back far enough to get the wires in there, get everything all nice and neat, so you don't have no shorts in the future. So now my project is to get all this long long wire it's everywhere into this wire loom and run it in behind and kind of follow the existing main harness uh, tape it alongside go down along the footwell underneath the, the past the back door and the side door take it up to the firewall and uh, then pass it through the firewall and get up to the front bumper so that's what I'll do next yeah, it wasn't so bad that those three wires I now got them in, in Romex Got them all the way up around here, going alongside the main harness. Got it all tucked in here, nice and neat. All the way down alongside the, the rail, underneath the um, seat belt mechanism. See if I run it right here. Zip tied it every so often. Got up going up, up around through the all the other, other wires up underneath the dashboard through the firewall. There's a big rubber boot there in the firewall and I'll show you where, the, where they come out at. So you can see here they are. 
the big rubber boot back there for the main wire harness. That's where the three wires are coming out through. So instead of doing like, I've seen other videos running these things underneath the car, they're all nice and protected. And I'll put more Romex, I'll put it all, all in around the, the fender well up to the front. But eventually it'll come up and I'll make my connection here for my six wire. So that way between the, um, I'll connect between the RV and the car. And then I'll, I'll turn the signals, brakes, and running lights, all that will work. So, more wiring to do. More okay, work. coming down the home stretch now with this. About to, about to wrap it up. I don't know how many hours I've got in this. I may keep in track, but it has been lengthy. But I've taken my time and try to do, give it a little extra care. Just wanted to show you how this works here. It's pretty cool. I've got a hot wire up front at the moment just so that it'll kick on as soon as I flip the switch. And you can watch the pedal. That's pretty sweet. So I like how it works. And a few modifications I made a little bit different from the the video from e-trailer, the way they showed the LED lights, they show put the LED lights maybe up on here on the dashboard or on the mirror. But I wanted I wanted a more permanent solution. So what I did, I put mine on top here. Let me turn it on again. So a nice bright light. So whenever that engages, I should see that through the camera. But I also did another thing is I run a, a another wire from the right switch heading up to the motorhome. So I'm going to put a light on the dashboard also. So I'm going to have two lights. So I know for sure when I'm driving with this thing, I'll know for certain that that light is in operation because I don't know how clear that LED is going to be from the camera. Um, oh, another note. And putting this light where I did, I just siliconed it to the back of a little white piece of plastic. So it's, it's a, and, and I wedged it up under here nice and tight. And the way I did that, of course, I, I ran the wires up along the A-pillar here. But you got to be careful uh, about once you're fishing the wire through because you got a curtain airbag in here. And you don't want that thing to go off or, or hinder its operation in, in the future. So what I did, I got this little hook here because the airbag starts, at, starts about right here. It comes across. So I got down here and pulled this back where I could fish the wire through at this location and go and go straight down so just because if you ran it around the airbag and that thing deployed that wire may hinder it, its operation and you don't want to do that so got that part done now what else was i want to show i guess we'll head, head up front now show what i did up there and taking the seat out makes it a, little e a whole lot easier too okay okay this is where i had it had that hot wire just so it work. I gotta finish up my wires going to the coach. Um, let's see some modifications. Well, one thing I did, I took this cowling off. You can see all, all of it right there, that big black piece and another big black piece. I took that off, not so much to do this job, but I plan on replacing the spark plugs in this thing. So it just makes it a whole lot easier. Your spark plugs are in the back of this 2011 Honda Fit. Uh, but it does make it that does make it a little easier to get to here because you see the check valve that's where I teed into the, the vacuum drop something and some other changes I made in watching the e trailer video I didn't care so much for the wiring you know they just kind of had everything all bunched together and wadded up but I, I tried to be careful and keep my had no extra wire cut everything nice crimped everything well put everything in Ro Romex or not Romex. Uh, what's this stuff called? And it's not called R R Romex. Um, but anyway, I'll put it all in there and um, got it all taped up well. And some of the connections I made off the fuse box, you can see here, because I had to have a hot, constant hot source going into the, the pump when it's activated. And I found this good connection here. And I also needed a constant 12 volt source coming from the motorhome because as I'm driving down the road I need to keep the car battery charged and I do that with this little device here 
this right here. It's got a fuse in it and a one-way diode, so the current coming from the motorhome will feed into the battery and not feed back out, keep it charged up. And when I did this, I had to modify the little this part from the factory. You see this from the I had to um, cut it because normally it just it just goes straight down the back of the battery, and you can't have your terminal shoot out like this. So I took my I took it and sliced it with some snips, and I took a heat gun, kind of remelted it a little bit, so it still snaps down, but it protects the wires. So nothing's going to touch it, bump it, bump into it. So that worked out. Of course, this is the fuse for the um, the vacuum pump that operates the brakes. Got all that done, and now the only thing I've got left to do is to uh, finish up. Here's my my wiring notes for the um, for the six-way wire hookup. Oh, I keep stepping on my stuff. And uh, here's that's how that, that's where that's going to hook up right here. Done got my my breakaway wired up. Um, you can see on, on this, it helps me on this connection. Because uh, I'm fixing to wire this up. One thing I'm, I'm going to change where this is normally for your, if you have uh, like electric brakes on a trailer, which I'll do now, which I won't be hauling, pulling the trailer no more. I'm going to take this terminal and run that brake light wire to that. So I'll have a signal going up to the dashboard. So when the brakes are activated in the car, I'll have a light on in the windshield on, in the car, but I'll also have a light come on in the RV, so I'll know for sure that that is working. And then my here, here's this this red wire that's going to be the the charging wire that's going to go back to to the car to keep the battery charged up. So just about to to wrap this job up. It has taken some time, but I believe in doing it yourself. If you do it yourself, well, I'm back. Time. Just about to wrap it up and got a phone call. Interrupted my thing. Anyway, I was wrapping it up. What was I saying? I was saying something about, yeah, doing it yourself, I think. You know, take your time, get your wires right, and uh, I think it's a, I'm, I'm glad I did it. Because if you, I mean, if you had to pay somebody to do this, it would probably cost a good lick for them to really take their time and, and, and do it well, do it correct, and not just as quick as possible and wrap up the wires and get it done. You know, it's like making this bracket, making it take an extra time to get things in there so hopefully it'll last a good long time without any any maintenance issues or troubles and all I got left now to do is uh, finish wiring up my six-way connector and put in a grandma grandma white wire and, and then hook it up to the RV and give it a test drive but uh, I think it's gonna work out pretty well a little Honda fit will be on the road behind the, the Winnebago well thanks for watching and have a great day